Well here we are up in a field called Archer and Bayliss and we're on the top of Breeden Hill so we're about 800, 850 feet up probably um, in a field of oilseed rape. This was a variety uh, called DK Exalt which was planted on the uh, about the 12th of August so quite an early planting to us after baled off winter barley straw and it was planted at uh, about 50 seeds a square meter which is quite high for that early drilling date but we've got a lot of stone up here um, so seed rate losses um, uh, are a little bit high and uh, here we are on the 13th of October crops looking really really well um, and those of you with a keen eye will notice that it's not just oilseed rape in here uh, we've planted this uh, with a companion crop thanks to uh, having a conversation with a Nuffield scholar Andy Howard down in Kent who's been doing this for a few years and um, it's a really interesting way of increasing the biodiversity uh, within the field when we've just trying to get away from this monoculture of single blocks um, of fields all with just one species in. So we've got uh, a mixed species in here of buckwheat which are those little red and um, sort of pinky white flowers a uh, member of the rhubarb family and the black labrador for good measure um, and then down on the ground dog gets very enthusiastic about agronomy uh, we've got some vetches as well some winter vetch so um, this hasn't had any broadleaf weed herbicide yet um, so I'm quite pleased with the way the vetch especially is uh, hugging the ground um, how much of uh, how much it's going to be able to outcompete um, things like there's a bit of chickweed, there's a bit of ground saw, there's a bit of sow thistle um, in here. Stop it. Um, I'm not sure. We'll have to reassess that in the spring. But uh, once the temperature gets down to about five degrees, the the buckwheat will die off. Um, as you can see, it's flowering at the moment, so that's providing a pollination source. Um, so if there are bees and hoverflies and flies and things like that around, they'll actually be uh, they'll actually be able to utilise um, that that sort of pollen, which which can only be good. Uh, we might even be attracting beneficial insects into here to um, combat things like uh, flea beetle um, potentially. So. This hasn't had any insecticide, obviously the neonicotinoids um, are banned from seed dressings um, but we haven't even applied anything um, post-emergence to, um, to, uh, to for flea beetles. So whether that's coincidental, whether that's where we are in the rotation, we grow all seed rape one year in six up here, um, whether it's because we're in the west so the pressure is less but uh, I'm not sure that it's completely less because we have lost a field of stubble turnips this year to flea beetle. Um, so, or whether that's got something to do with this companion cropping. Um, time will tell. The more we do these sorts of uh, tests and trials and experiments, the more knowledge we're going to be able to gain as farmers about what works on our land. So here we are, we have uh, some very healthy oilseed rape plants. Um, we're up to about seven leaves already, just had a fungicide. Um, for light leaf spot um, and foma mixed in with the buckwheat which when it gets to about five degrees C they'll start to die off um, and then we've got the vetches uh, in here as well obviously a vetch being a legume will be starting to fix a little bit of nitrogen that the crop can potentially use next spring um, and looking at the vetches some of these will start to flower in their own right in the next sort of couple of weeks as well so that will obviously provide a bit more pollen and nectar so this is it oilseed rape with companion cropping and uh, yeah we'll keep monitoring it see how we get on <laughs>